Have you ever wondered whether you could handle a data frame as if you're handling a spreadsheet? If you answered yes, then this video is for you because today I'm going to be sharing with you a new Python library that will allow you to graphically handle the data frame as if it is a spreadsheet inside a popular software such as Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So before we begin, let me give a credit to J.I., who is a subscriber of this channel. So let me show you. So in one of the comments, he suggested whether I have heard of Mito or whether I have tried it. And so I went to the trymito.io website shown here. And apparently you have to register for it in order to have access to the library. So I have already registered for the Mito library and I'm still waiting for the early access from the development team. And so while I'm waiting, so I thought I might as well create a video about this so that I could share this to all of the data science community. And so let's have a look at the Mito Python library. And so the tagline here is saying that it allows you to edit a spreadsheet right inside Jupyter Notebook, and it will also generate the Python code. So previously I've created a total of three videos on the Python library that will allow you to handle pandas data frame. So that includes the bamboo lib, pandas UI, and recently the pandas GUI. And actually there's more such as the sweet viz library. And so I'm probably going to be covering that in a future video. And in this video, I'm going to be covering the Mito Python library. And so let's continue with our quick review of this. So let's have a look at the bullet points on the website here. So right here, it says that it allows you to add a spreadsheet directly into your Jupyter notebook. And the great thing about it is that you could also edit the spreadsheet. And while you're editing it, you will see in the example to the right here, the code will be automatically generated for you. Okay, let's look at the animation here. You could modify the data values inside the spreadsheet, and then you could find Toyota, which is misspelled, and then it will be correctly spelled. And then to the right, you will be seeing the corresponding code. And so that will allow you to copy the code and then apply it in a production environment or also in a script that you could automate for future data pre-processing. And the great thing about it is that you could directly access the underlying data of the data frame right inside the Jupyter Notebook. So in the Pandas GUI, it will launch this Windows. So I think it's probably coming from the Qt library. So it allows you to have access to the GUI, but then it requires you to run it locally on your own computer. And so for those of you wondering whether you could run it in like Google Colab or on the cloud, like a Azure notebook, so that wouldn't be possible. But then for Mido, it seems that it is possible because everything is running directly from the Jupyter notebook. And so far, some big companies are currently testing this library. And so as you can see, when you're editing the data value, the code will be automatically generated for you. And then you could do this like once, like initially, before you proceed further to the next step in your data pre-processing phase. And then you could copy the code, save it as a Python script file, and then you could apply that to automatically pre-process large volumes of data in a production environment. And so this is pretty cool. And as you can see, what you need to do is import the Mito library inside the Jupyter notebook as you would normally do with other libraries. And then you're gonna read in a CSV file and then you're gonna call the mito.sheet function. And then the import argument will be the CSV file that was read using the pandas. So actually there should also be import pandas as PD in here as well. And so I've already put in my email and then submitted to request for an early access to the library. And so I hope you, that you could, and so I hope that you all could give it a try as well. And then let me know in the comments when it is released, whether it's useful for your data science workflow. And as soon as I get access to this Python library, I will be making another video to show it to all of you. And so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.